Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 7.4 notes, properties of rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. So we're going to start with rectangles. What is just the basic geometric definition of a rectangle? It is a type of parallelogram, and it has four right angles. So I'm going to add that to my picture. This shape has four right angles at its corners. So just like before, the rectangles have all the properties of a parallelogram. So everything was true in the lesson the other day for properties of parallelograms. That is also going to be true for a rectangle. Additionally, though, it says plus it has four right angles. And then we're going to look at today in class that the diagonals are going to be congruent. So if you were to draw in those diagonals, which they have it in the picture, those diagonals are going to be congruent to each other. So meaning that the length from A to C if you were to pop that out of the shape and stand it up, it's going to be the same height as B to D. So those diagonals are going to be congruent to each other. So I'm going to do that in colors. We're going to say that the diagonal B to D is going to be congruent to that yellow diagonal A to C. Since we know that it's a parallelogram, the other day we also learned from a parallelogram that the diagonals bisect each other. So if this full blue amount is equal to this full yellow amount, that also means that each of these pieces from A to E is going to be the same length as D to E, as B to E, and as C to E. So we know that the diagonals, all four of those pieces of the diagonals are going to be congruent, as well as the full diagonals being congruent as well. So that is for our rectangle. Now let's look at a rhombus. What is a rhombus by definition? Again, it's still a parallelogram, but instead of four right angles, it's going to have four congruent sides. So I get to mark that. Every single one of these sides is going to be congruent. So rhombi, that's technically the plural of rhombus, it's going to have all of the properties of a parallelogram. Plus, it's going to have four congruent sides. So that's the basic definition. But we do have additional information about its diagonals. Its diagonals are going to be perpendicular to each other. Remember that perpendicular means that they cross each other, and they cross each other at a 90-degree angle. Okay, so I'm going to put that in my picture. In my picture, these two diagonals, J to L and M to K, would cross each other, and they'd cross each other at 90. So these diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Those diagonals are also going to bisect, so the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So we already know that since it's a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent, but it's going to bisect the opposite angles, meaning that this green diagonal is going to cut these opposite angles in half, meaning that all four of these green dots, all four of those green angles would be the same amount, so all four of those angles are going to be congruent. And then the other diagonal does that as well to J and L. That diagonal gets bisected, so all of these star angles would be the same. That gets bisected, this one gets bisected, and then this one does as well. So all four of those pink pieces are congruent, and then all four of those green pieces are congruent. Okay? And then a square is just going to have all of the properties of a rectangle, all of the properties of a rhombus, and all of the properties of a parallelogram. So thankfully I already have this all listed for you, but a square... Let's look at a square. A square is going to be a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. So it gets its four congruent sides from the rhombus, it gets its four right angles from the rectangle, and it is still a type of parallelogram. So it is going to be a type of parallelogram, so all of these properties are true from the other day. It is going to be a type of rectangle, so all of the rectangle properties are true. And it's going to be a type of rhombus, so all of the rhombus properties are true. Okay. So if I were to put that into this picture, we know it's got just by definition, let me go ahead and draw that in. By definition, it has four right angles. It's got four congruent sides. So one, two, three, four. What that also means is that since it's a square, this is going to be our regular quadrilateral. That is going to be where these diagonals are not only congruent, but each of these small pieces are going to be congruent. And then if you think through this, these create four, I'm going to do some colors, these create four of these triangles, four of these right triangles. I know that they're right because since it's a rhombus, that angle in the middle, those are going to be perpendicular to each other. So um, pink, yellow, light blue, and we'll go dark blue. All of these triangles are going to be congruent to each other. 
and they're right triangles because we know that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. And whenever you split that into two, all of these pieces, all of these angles end up being the same. So what is half of 90 when that gets bisected? All of these angles are gonna be 45 degrees each. So all the way around, all of those angles are gonna be 45. And I could fill that in for every single one. So these are four congruent right triangles and they're 45, 45, 90 triangles. So we're gonna fill out this chart together. You'll get better at this the more you do it, but just thinking through the properties. What is true of the parallelogram? Check the quadrilateral that always has the following properties. In a parallelogram, the diagonals are not congruent, but the consecutive angles are supplementary. Diagonals are not necessarily perpendicular. Diagonals do not bisect opposite angles. And the diagonals are obviously not perpendicular and congruent since they're not perpendicular or congruent, okay? So if this is true of a parallelogram, I get to copy it all the way across because it's gonna be true of a rhombus since that's a parallelogram, it's gonna be true of a rectangle since that's a parallelogram, and it's gonna be true of a square. So let's do that again, but let's focus just on the rhombus. The diagonals are not congruent in a rhombus, but they are perpendicular. So if that's true in a rhombus, it's also gonna be true in a square. The diagonals do bisect the opposite angles, so they're gonna do that in a square as well. Okay, and then last but not least, let's look at our rectangle. Our rectangle, the diagonals are in fact perpendicular to each other, we said that. Um, they do not bisect the opposite angles. And so, um, oh goodness, no, I'm so sorry, y'all. The diagonals are not perpendicular to each other. Uh, the diagonals are going to be congruent to each other. That's the one I meant to circle. So since that is true for a rectangle, that is also going to be true for a square. The diagonals are not perpendicular in a rectangle. Let me give you a picture of that, just so that, since I made a mistake there. Um, you can tell that this angle right here, that is not a right angle. Those diagonals are not perpendicular. That's an obtuse angle, and so um, the other one is the acute angle, and so those are not gonna be perpendicular. So in a rectangle, diagonals are not perpendicular, but they are congruent. The square is the one that has both. The square is the one that gets to say, okay, not only are its diagonals um, perpendicular to each other, they're also congruent, so I get to check this one for both. Diagonals are perpendicular and congruent to each other. Okay? So as far as filling a chart like that out goes, it takes a while and it takes getting used to, but y'all will get better and better and better at it the more you do it. Okay, so let's keep going. Now I wanna look at determining whether the following quadrilateral is a parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, or square most specifically. So what is marked in each picture is going to be very important. What is marked in this picture is four congruent sides. By definition, which shape has four congruent sides? That would be a rhombus. Some of you say, might, may say, Ms. Hall, why is it just a rhombus and not a square? Well, because this is a 130 degree angle, and so since that's not a 90 degree angle, I know for sure that this is not a square. Okay? This one has parallel markings, so we know at least it's a parallelogram but we also have um, a six on every single side length. So this has four congruent sides. So it could be a rhombus, but the fact that they have this, uh, this right angle marking here is important. Because it's a parallelogram, I get to copy that to the opposite angle. So those are both gonna be 90. And then we know that the angles that are consecutive to each other in a parallelogram add up to 180. So that forces this one to be 90, and then its opposite angle is 90. So not only does this have four congruent sides, it also has four congruent angles that are right angles, and so this most specifically is going to be a square. All right, what is happening on this one? On this one, it's got diagonals, and not all four of those are the same, but this one diagonal gets bisected, and then this other diagonal gets bisected as well. So that is just going to be a property of a parallelogram. That is true for all parallelograms. All right, this last one contains four uh, right angles, and so since it contains four right angles, I definitely know it's a rectangle. Why is it not going to be a square? It's not going to be a square because these lengths are different, and so we can only say that it's a rectangle. All right, there will be a second video explaining this next section.